Hello all, welcome or welcome back. Appreciate you popping over. Today for Future Friday, I decided after a lot of shadow and bone time, whether it be my rereads or watching the show, I needed something more rom com flavored. So last week I picked up Hana Khan, It Carries On by Uzma Jalaluddin. Now I mentioned this in my anticipated April video and I may or may not have mentioned that I had it on hold at the library, which was absolutely true at the time. And the hold did come in, which I since returned. But on Indie Bookstore Day, I was running around and I was like, you know what I really want is I really want to read this book and I really want a copy of it. Because if you haven't like really looked at the cover, I'll stop that because of the light balance. But the cover is just absolutely gorgeous. So I went over to Women and Children First, which is a bookstore in Chicago, and they have recently started carrying more romance. They do have one mass market spinner. I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty sparse, but for an indie, even having that spinner is a pretty big deal, unfortunately. So I wanted to be able to give them sales for romance titles. They have a little bit more in terms of trade paperback, which makes sense in terms of like distribution and like how stores can send and receive. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. I went for this book and I found this book and bought it. So I'm very excited about it. Like I said, the cover is gorgeous. Now I loved Aisha at Last, which I talked about as well in my preview, not preview, anticipated for the month, but that book was one of the best modernizations, retellings of Pride and Prejudice I read recently. And it came out to my recollection in a year that was pretty heavy on Pride and Prejudice revamps, so to speak. So the hate to love, like tension dynamic, and that was so good. And I wasn't sure what the dynamic in this was gonna be. I think I maybe browsed the blurb before it, but it was more like I knew I liked the author based on that book and the cover was gorgeous, so I'm gonna give it a try. So this book follows Hana, who works part-time at her family's restaurant as a new restaurant is kind of entering the neighborhood. And she also works part-time as an intern at the local like public radio station, so to speak. And she has a podcast where there is an anonymous commenter that she has formed a friendship with. And even though neither of them know each other personally or know their real identities, they have found a real connection through the comments field. So there's a lot going on. That being said, there is also some exploration of racism and hate crimes targeting a community. So while it is all handled really well, it is hard to read. So if you need something that's just straight romance right now, this may be something to wait on. But while that is definitely a part of the book and an important part of our main character's experience and kind of the way she has to adjust how she views the world. It also isn't the only thing going on in this book. So it's not all light fluff, but I think it's a really nuanced, engaging book. That being said, I think that that kind of also gets into, you know, it is that trade paperback romance -y type book, but I don't know that I would classify it as a romance specifically. There's a heavy, heavy romance plot line, but we are so tight on Hannah. In the same way with like Honey Girl, we've got lots of these kind of romances coming up, right? Where they're packaged as romances, but they feel like a more modernized version of what would have been packaged as maybe chiclet in the 2000s. And that too is reflected a little bit in the format of the book for me, especially in like the comment section between Hana and her mystery commenter. We've got a little bit of You've Got Mail going on with this one with the new restaurant coming into town and, well, the community and the son, well, he's the owner, Aiden, who just kind of happens to have an awful father who puts people on edge the minute he meets them regardless. And so there's a little bit of that dynamic and you can guess where that's going. But with those comments, it reminded me a lot of like the adult Meg Cabot I used to read back when that was current, right? 
So it plays with a lot of similar things in a more updated form. I almost would have liked to see more of that, really leaning into that play or something because that's where we get the most of Aiden outside of Hana's perspective. And she, you know, views him as a competitor. And there is a great tension there. It's a different kind of hate to love dynamic in this than we got in Aisha at last. So that was an interesting new flavor. And I think it really cements that she is excellent at that. And I'm sure she will continue to explore new dynamics in her books. But I, I was like, okay, great. This cements you as a really good enemies to lovers author for me, because you can come at it from different dynamics of, of what might set people at odds. And that competition, this being motivated on homicide as this is her family's restaurant that has been, you know, her mother's pride and joy and dream for years. So this new upstart business coming into the community, threatening their reputation and the idea of gentrification, there's a whole lot there. So everything that put them at odds made sense. I think just having a little bit more of his perspective from either the comments, which we do get a lot of, or I don't know, I think maybe I was missing that point of view a little bit because there were times when Hana was doing things where I was like, oh, don't do that, don't do that. Like in the, in the war between the restaurants of sorts. That being said, I, as I have mentioned, am very like susceptible to being uncomfortable or awkward or embarrassed for characters when they're doing something where I'm like, don't do it, don't do it. So there was a lot there. Where I think that it really shined though too was its exploration of family for sure and the kind of radio podcasty side, which I also would have like to see even more expanded. And I think it did a good job that the narrative did a good job at balancing all this. I just would have liked more of all of it somehow. I, I don't know how to make that happen in a page count. Just go with me in a perfect world here. But the radio side of things was interesting. Also, this is the third radio-ish or podcast-ish book that I think I've read this year. So if you liked this one or you liked Honey Girl or you liked the X Talk, I definitely think that, you know, any of those would be good read-alikes. I also think if you like Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade, the kind of camaraderie online that translates to a different dynamic in person or like they have this existing relationship online and don't know that, you know what I'm saying, that dynamic, if you liked that, either book, read-alikes as well. So... I think that it's created some conversations in my mind between a bunch of works. So at the radio station, Hana, you know, has fought for this internship where she's just been kind of filing and organizing and doing interny type things. And her and the other intern who don't super get along have been given this opportunity to do a show and they have pitched it as being a way to reach more listeners and to reach a more diverse audience. But Hana is immediately worried, rightly so, because it becomes evident that the station wants to kind of forward existing narratives specifically about Muslim communities that she is not interested in perpetuating and she actively wants to fight against. She's more interested in personal interest in stories specifically about family and the really intriguing ways that people interact with each other. So it becomes this question of what stories get told and who those stories are serving. And I thought it was done so well. There's some excellent nuance in terms of how she has to navigate situations with her boss. So I think that all sides of these different storylines really explore complementary ideas in terms of Hana trying to figure out what her community looks like and what change is going to mean for her community. And her, her community is at this kind of change point. There is a much better term for that that just is escaping me. 
and so is her life, right? She is in this internship and her best friends from childhood are both also at kind of these precipices of change. And that relationship has shifted in a way that makes her feel a little bit more alone than she would like. Her sister and her sister's husband are having a baby and their wants and needs may be shifting from what Hannah assumed would be the future for everyone. So there is a lot of like the interpersonal change and this idea of change that kind of gets funneled in to this relationship and this competition with Aiden, this new guy in the neighborhood. To be fair, he was a jerk to her at first meeting. Like they come in to the restaurant to try out the new restaurant and basically start insulting the place right away, thinking she's just the waitress, which let's be clear, that is real rude regardless of whether the person is a part of the family that owns that business or is just an employee. But you do you. Don't do that is what I'm saying. If that's you, please don't do that. So there is a lot of dynamic there. And I think part of it in terms of wanting his point of view a little bit more or to see a little bit more interaction on the forum between their, the two of them. And again, there is a decent amount of interaction. It's just about wanting a little bit more softness there. And we do see him utterly protective of her in the bad situation that happens. But I also would have liked to see that a little bit more even outside of traumatic events. I did like that what kind of pushed them together more was this cousin that came over from India to help with the restaurant. And he's just this baseball loving kind of like happy go lucky guy who even though Aiden is the competition for this family restaurant, he decides he likes Aiden and starts hanging out with him on the DL and like tries to pretend that he's not hanging out with them. And it's just like this quirky thing that they accept. So there, there's a lot of fun to be had there. And there are some really fun comedic moments that balance out the heavier moments for sure. And again, I also loved the community that this built. And I could definitely feel the stakes of not wanting the community to be in jeopardy, liking the community as it is, not wanting change in that way. And I think having that familiar heart to it, and to be clear, I don't mean familiar as a bad thing, it just gives us something narratively to kind of familiarize ourselves with while providing new, fresh takes on the dynamic in the same way that Aisha at last was a fresh new take on that dynamic. And that also allows these other plot lines to kind of grow more as well. But because the other plot lines are so central to what's going on, I think it takes it more into the like, romantic plot but not I don't know like romance by itself because I feel like this is more Hannah's journey although I think we do get an epilogue of sorts so that might that I don't know I don't know that's all a larger conversation I think regardless the romance is central to things so this book didn't let me down it was smart and it had heart I don't regret my detour to another bookstore and spending more money. I will, I'll post what I bought on any bookstore day, don't worry. Yeah, I definitely think that this is one to pick up, especially if you liked Aisha at last. And there are some definite read-alikes in the moment right now, where if you liked any of those titles, I think you'll like this one. Or if you picked this one up already, I think that those titles might be something that you would enjoy going forward if you're looking for something in a similar vein. So if you read this, let me know what you thought. And in the meantime, read something good. And yeah.